So welcome everybody. Um, today we will be looking at applications of Newton's laws of motion. Today will be a busy day and uh, I need your full attention today. <coughs> are you ready? Now we are looking at the applications of Newton's laws of motion and there are three of them. Uh, the first law basically tells us that what if the net external forces acting on a system is zero then the change in the momentum of the system will also be zero or another way to put this is if if there is no change in the momentum of a system then the net external force will be equal to zero now the second law basically states that the net external force acting on a system is equal to the rate at which the momentum of that system changes and this therefore is equal to mv which is just gonna be m dv dt plus v dm dt now this expression depends on whether the mass is constant or the velocity is what constant now law three basically states that when two objects one and two interact with each other the force experienced by one due to the presence of two is equal to the force experienced by two due to the presence of one they are equal but oppositely directed and they are of the same kind now these are the three laws of motion and on these three laws we will we have built a lot of concepts and today we will continue with that discussion um let's start first with this little question which of the following is an accurate free body diagram for block two during a collision please pick all right i'm ending the vote now keep in mind that f12 is the force on one by two and f21 is the force on two by one all right um a hundred percent pick c the answer is actually c the answer is c <laughs> all right i'm ending the vote now okay i'm, I'm ending now interesting um 17 percent feel the answer is d and the 78 percent think the answer is c now understand that newton's third law basically states that forces always are created in pairs and the force that one asserts on two is equal to but opposite to the force that two asserts on one so if you have a truck if for some unknown reason the truck collides with a little sedan or even if a truck collides with a bulk the force that the truck asserts on the bulk will be equal to the force that the bulk asserts on the truck that's Newton's third law of motion but intuitively it doesn't when you look at it physically yes the little car gets more destroyed than the truck and people think that the car on the the force on the little car is greater but which really it's not you understand that right so based on Newton's third law of motion the answer should be <coughs> C it really does not matter it really does not depend on the speeds of the cars just before collision keep in mind that Newton's third law is very easy to state but it's amongst all the three laws it is the most difficult to interpret and I gave you a set of rules that will help you to interpret Newton's third law of motion that for any interaction pair or for the action reaction pair they must fulfill three characteristics one 
the forces has to be equal in magnitude to they have to be what oppositely directed three they must be of the same kind and the four they should what act on separate bodies one and two are actually combined though i've separated them now let's look at the tension force the tension force I'm going to summarize the tension force into four very important statements. Tension, as you already know, exists only in third strings. Tension, as you already know, exists only in third strings. And based on our last discussion, the tension in a string exists because the atoms in that string resist what? Extension. Remember, Every string and every rope on, based on your basic chemistry is made up of what? Atoms. And these atoms are bonded together by bonds. They may be covalent bonds, metallic bonds, depending upon the type of strings. Really, we don't care the type of string it is. But we all know is that the bonds prevent the string from what? Extending when being stretched. This is a string. Now, when the string itself is relaxed, there is no tension in this string. But when the string is stretched, there is what? Tension along the string. Now, the most important thing that you need to note about tension is it acts only along a string. And at any given point, listen carefully, and at any given point, it always acts in what? Opposite directions. Do you understand that? Let me show that to you what I mean by that. If I have, if little Johnny is pulling a string, the tension at this point, let me use a different color. The tension at this point A is the same as the tension at this point B, which is the same as the tension at this point C, which is the same as the tension at this point D, as long as the string is massless. Do you understand me? Now, in a horizontal string that has mass, in other words, in a massive string, the tension varies depending upon the location of what? The string. As a matter of fact, for a massive string, the tension at D is greatest and the tension at A is least for a horizontal string. The reverse is true for a vertical string. And I'm going to explain why very soon. But then, my previous statement is this. The tension at point B acts in opposite directions, acts along the string in both directions. So this is T, this is T, this is T, and this is T. Now, this row has an exception and the only exception is at the end points at the end points the tension only acts in one direction there is no string in this direction and there is no string in this direction and tension force only exists in what in strings yes please if the string is massive if the string has mass the tension will be greatest at d and least at t but if the string is massless, the tension is the same everywhere. All right, let me show you why. Look up, please. Let's do this. Let's assume here, well, let me not make it that simple. There's friction. Let's, let's say that the surface is rough. And the question is, we need to calculate the tension in that string. We have two blocks, block one, and block two. Please put your pens down and look up. I'm going to unveil a procedure to you that will help you to always get the problems right. And you need to understand this procedure. If you miss this, you will struggle throughout the, this course. But if you get this, it will help you. Um, <clears throat> when you are given a problem, which, they will be, they will, which I'm certain 200% certain that you'll meet a problem like this in my test and in the AP where there are two objects, two or more objects interacting with each other. The very first thing that is crucial in solving this kind of problems is to pick your system. 
When you identify your system, the next is to ask yourself one question. What is the system interacting with? For example, if we pick our system to be block 1, this is block 2. If we pick our system to be block 1, then you realize that block 1 is interacting with a couple of things. Block 1 is interacting with the earth. Block 1 is interacting with the string. Let me call this string 1. And that is it. Block 1 is not interacting with block 2. Do you understand me? Block 1 is not interacting with block 2. Most people think it is. It is not. Now, when we talk about two objects interacting with each other, two objects in physics are said to interact with each other if they assert forces on each other. If they don't, they are not interacting with each other. Do you understand that? Block 2 is not asserting any force on block 1, the string does. So block 1 interacts with the earth and with the string. Now the force due to the string is called tension. And I will represent it just by T1 because it's on string 1. Now the, when, when the block interacts with the earth, there are three forces. There are three forces, let me put it this way, due to the earth. <clears throat> you have, if I put the earth here, and it's critical that you identify the three forces. You have gravity, and the force due to the gravity is just going to be M1G. You have the normal force, which is going to be N1, and you have what? Friction, because this is a surface, and friction in this case is going to be kinetic friction. FK1. Look at it this way, FK1 due to what? The earth. Now, when you identify what the system is interacting with, it helps you to draw an accurate free body diagram. So if we draw a free body diagram for block one, we expect to see one, two, three, four forces. And the free body diagram will look as follows. This will be N1, this will be T1, this will be kinetic friction on 1 by the earth, and this will be the force of gravity M1G. It may look trivial in this case, but what I'm going to give you next will not look trivial. So it's important you understand the steps. This is the system, in this case, is block 1. Now, if we move on to block 2, we will have a similar scenario. The system here is block 2. This is the earth. This is string 2. When we get to rotation, this procedure will become very important. You will still have gravity. This is M2G. You will have the normal force. This is N2. And still you will have friction. This is F kinetic on block 2 by the earth. And here you will have tension, which is just T2. So if we draw the free body diagram, if we draw the free body diagram for block 2, we will have here, this is T2, which is going to be equal to F, because the tension along a string is the same as long as that string is massless. Now, this is M2G, this is N2, and this is the kinetic friction on 2 by the earth. If we go back to this diagram, this is our free body diagram for mass 1. And now this is our free body diagram for mass 2. Yes, please. Yes. Yes. So, thank you, Andrew. Thank you, Andrew. That is a keen observation. Mass 2 interacts with string 1 and string 2. So, we need to add here string 1 which is still 
tension and the force here is T1. <coughs> no, we are looking only at the force in the string and its tension. No, you cannot associate tension with friction. We are looking only at, look at it, when block 2 interacts with string 1. What force results from that interaction? It's tension and it's T1. When block 2 interacts with string 2, what force is generated from that interaction? It's tension and it's what? T2. Don't complicate it. Think simple. Now, um, so this we will have here T1. Now, if we write down the Newton's second law equation for block 1, we will have T1 minus F1 due to earth of K will be equal to M1A. For block 2, we will have T2 minus T1 minus FK2 due to earth will be equal to M2A. Yes, please? Definitely. Uh, <clears throat> our target is to calculate the acceleration of the system. Well, if we need to calculate the acceleration of the system, you will quickly realize that if you add equation 1 and equation 2, the T1s will cancel out each other, right? So we will be left with T2 minus fk1 minus fk2 all of this should be equal to m1 plus m2 all multiplied by a we know that this guy here is equal to what f but by definition fk1 is just mu k1 multiplied by n1 which is just gonna be mu k um, i'm gonna let to simplify the problem, I'm going to let mu k1 equal to mu k2, which is just mu. Um, so we are going to have here mu m1g as well as fk2 will be mu2 n2. This is just going to be mu m2g. So if we take this and fit it back in there, we have here f minus mu m1g minus mu m2g all equal to m1 plus m2 multiplied by a pardon f yeah same. f is the same as t2 because the tension along this string is the same everywhere right so the force that you pull is going to be equal to the tension in the string that's a consequence of newton's third law of what motion so um if we solve for acceleration A, it will be equal to what? F minus mu. It will be F minus mu bracket M1 plus M2G divided by M1 plus M2. This is the acceleration of the system. You could realize that to calculate the tension T1, you will have to take this guy, substitute in there. You already know the expression for what F, and therefore you could calculate what T1. Now, this is a bit complicated because we have added friction. Let me tease you now with this question. Suppose we have, this is M, this is 2M, and a force is applied there. Now, we have, this is 2M, this is M, and of the same force is applied. This is system 1, this is T1, this is system 2, this is T2. Now, both surfaces are smooth, let's uncomplicate things. So, the question is, which of the following is correct? A, T1 is equal to T2. B, T1 is greater than T2. C, T1 is less than T2. D, you need more information. Please vote. Understand that the system accelerates. I'll end the vote now. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs>
Okay, voting ended. Interesting. About 6% of the class feel the answer is A, the tensions are equal. Nobody picked B. And uh, everybody is going, almost everybody, 89% think the answer is C. That is T1 is less than T2. And the 6% of the class feel they need more information. Let's see how this works, please. <clears throat> Look up, everybody. Let's start here. The system is smooth. Um, yeah. Wait a minute. Which is correct? A. A1 is greater than A2. B. A1 is equal to A2. C. A1 is less than A2. D. Need more info. So please vote. The reason is, if I answer this question, I'll answer this one. So, yeah. Yeah. When you're talking A1, you mean the full system, right? Yeah, the acceleration, they're coupled, so they have the same acceleration. I like that. As fast as you saw it, that way really helps a lot. So the vote ended. Now, the class unanimously feel that the systems have the same acceleration. So let's see. I'm going to redraw this here. We have, look up everybody. This is 2M attached to M all being pulled by a force F. This is M attached to 2M all being pulled by a force F. If we, listen, listen, if we choose the two blocks as our entire system, like that, the total mass here will be what? 3M. The total mass here will be what? 3M. By Newton's second law, F will be equal to 3MA, which means that A is equal to F divided by what? 3M. Same here. F will be equal to 3MA, which means that um, A is equal to F divided by 3M. So the acceleration is the same in both cases. All right. Question, why didn't we make use of the tension in the string in here? when we pick the two blocks as our system because they are internal forces and as a result by Newton's third law of motion they cancel out each other now let us break down the forces for this guy look out everybody for the tension here is T1 the tension here is T2 for the first block this is T1 this is 2mg and that is N1 for this block, you will have here F. This is T1. This is MG. And that is N2. Now, look up, everybody. This is crucial. If you consider the motion of the set of the first block only, you will see that T1 is equal to what? 2MA. Which is going to be equal to what? Um, 2m multiplied by f divided by 3m. The m's cancel and t1 is equal to 2f over what? 3. This is the tension in case 1. In case 2, if we do the free body diagram, this is t2, this is mg, and that is n, you will recognize that t2 is equal to what? ma which is just going to be equal to F divided by what? 3. So clearly, T1 is equal to 2T2. In other words, T1 is greater than T2. Do you understand that now? Oh, they are switch? Yes, yeah, so it's like T2 is greater than T2 is greater oh, yeah. than T1. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, okay. With respect to this problem, the answer would be C. Do you all agree with me? This, these are common yet intricate problems in AP Physics C. Now, the next, the next. So the question is, what is the value, what is the minimum value of F for M not to fall? What is the minimum value that F can have so that M should not fall block two, they will accelerate as a unit. There has to be 
Well, Otherwise, it will fall. Yeah, okay, that's to <laughs> Of course, right? Yeah. Look up, everybody. From the looks in your faces, let me do this one. Um, look up, please. Please, look up. There will be plenty of things like this in your, qu in your test. First of all, this is block one, and this is block two. Let us draw the forces here. This is 3mg. This is n. There is no friction on the ground, so there are no forces on the ground. Now, we know that block two asserts a force on block one. This is n1 by 2. This is n21. This is mg. And there is a friction force here, Fs. So if we draw the free body diagram for block 2, we will have here the normal force on 2 by 1. We will have here m1g. And then we will have here Fs. This is the friction force on 2 by 1. If we do the free body diagram for the bigger block, we'll have here F, we'll have here N12, we'll have here 3MG, we'll have here N. All right. Um, is there a force missing? Is there a force missing here? Is there a force missing anywhere? Remember that these two diagrams are paired. For every, so it means that there is this, there will be a force here, FS12, right? All right, now look up everybody for block one. For Let's begin with block two. N21 is equal to MA. We also know that FS21 is equal to MG, which is going to be equal to mu, the coefficient of static friction, multiplied by N21, which is just going to be mu S MG. Yes, please? No. So then F, F to the second is the force asserted on the bigger block, but we are dealing with the smaller block now. Remember, F only acts on the bigger block. It has nothing to do with the smaller block. In other words, to put it using the right terminology, F interacts only with the bigger block. It does not interact with the smaller block. Can, it, can you say, ask that again? You mean this one? Look here, look at this diagram. The system is moving to the right, right? So the forces along the y direction are balanced. If, if, if the weight of this small block is not balanced by the static friction force, it will fall, isn't it? So the question was, find the minimum value of F so that the block should not fall, right? And if the block is not falling, it means that the static friction force acting upward balances the weight acting downwards. Yes, Clement? No. We are coming. We are coming. Yes, yes, please. The normal force, listen now. Oh, yes. Um, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let me see. Let me, yep. Let me, let me. Please, look up. Let me rewrite this. Let me rewrite this. We know from, look up, please. Thank you. We know that N21 is equal to MA. This is the as a result of the fact that the summation of forces in the X direction is MA. Now let's look at the sum of forces in the Y direction. F of S21 will be equal to MG. True or false? By definition, we know that F of S21 is equal to what? Mu S N to 1. Right? Yeah. 
and all of this should be equal to mg this expression so this would mean that n21 is equal to mg divided by mu s so if we now move on we know that n21 which is equal to mg divided by mu s this will be equal to ma the m's can cancel and the acceleration of the system is g divided by what mu s that is the acceleration of the system we are looking for the force i know that now looking at this the bigger block you can see that f minus n 1 2 will be equal to 3 m a but by newton's third law n 1 2 is equal to what n 2 1 which is going to be equal to m g divided by mu s therefore f minus m g divided by mu s is equal to 3 m bracket g divided by mu s if we take this to the other side f becomes 3 m g divided by mu s plus m g divided by mu s which is going to be 4 m g divided by mu s and that is the minimum value f can take which is the value claiming gave such that the system can accelerate without the little block falling apart let's look at the next example now both surfaces are smooth so the question is which of the following statement is true this is block one block two this is block one block two pardon yeah, they are in contact. F12 is equal to... Now, this is system A. And this is system B. F12 and system A is equal to F12 and system B. F12 in system A is greater than F12 in system B F12 in A is less than F12 in B so please vote which one is correct the only way you could do this correctly is to draw a free body diagram and I don't see anybody drawing anything so please start by drawing a free body diagram for both objects all right i'll end the vote now just a quick question is the acceleration of system one different from the acceleration of system two do you mean they're the same? Yes. Yeah. Okay. If they have the same acceleration, will the force that block one experience be different in both cases? Yes. All right. I'm going to end the vote now. All right. The majority of the class, 83% feel the answer is C. And 11% feel the answer is A. Now, look up, everybody. I'll give you an example to do. Just watch. Let's do the free body diagram for the objects in both cases. For object 1 in case A, we have F. This is going to be F12. This is 2MG. And that is N. For object 2 in case A, this is F21, that is MG, <coughs> that is N2, this is N1. So if you recognize the fact that the acceleration of the system 
is F divided by 3M. So, in case 1, F21 is equal to what? MA. And we know that, I'm going to go to the next slide. So, F21 is MA, which is M bracket F divided by 3M which is just going to be f divided by 3. Right, now let's do the free body diagram for case 2. If, if we do the free body diagram for case 2, this is for A. Um, look at it this way, this is f21, which is the force that 2 experienced by 1. And it's going to be the mass of one, the mass of two, multiplied by the acceleration of the system, uh, right? I thought you were doing F one two. So, even if I'm doing F one two, understand that by Newton's third law, F two one is equal to F one two, which is going to be F divided by one three. This is the first system. Let me go back. Oh, oh yes. Yeah. Yes. I know. It's a little confusing, so pay attention, please. For the second case, if we do the free body diagram, we'll have here F. This is MG. This is F12. And this is N1. We'll have here F21. This is 2MG. And that is N2. All right, now... We can clearly see that F21 is going to be equal to what? 2MA, which is 2MF divided by what? 3M, which will be 2F over 3. So clearly, the force in case B is greater. So the answer is C. C. <laughs> Both surfaces are smooth, yes? Now, the system moves as one, and that is only possible only if there's friction. Oh, so the ball, how slow does it have to go for it to not fall off? This is system A. This is system B. Now, note that both systems move such that block one does not slide so the question is which is true a a1 is greater than a2 the acceleration of yeah a sub a it will be helpful if you do a free body diagram i can guarantee you that if you don't draw a free body diagram you will always be tricked and you'll always get it wrong all right, I'm going to end the poll now. Interesting. Um, a majority of the class feel the answer is A. Look up, everybody. Let's start first by drawing the free body diagram for the system. For this block, this is the force diagram. It helps us to draw a good free body diagram. This is MG. This is N21. Is there friction between the two blocks? Yes. yes. In what direction is the friction? Is it? F okay. Oh, in the opposite direction. Why do you think that? It's not always opposite. And that statement is in red in your notebooks. The kinetic friction is always opposite. But static friction, the direction, depends on the circumstance and on the object is acted upon. Now, look up, everybody. Look up. For you to quickly see this, please, when you are sitting in a car and not driving, when the car suddenly starts, what happens? You jerk backwards. Your inertia resists changes in what? Motion. Now, when this force is applied to the system and accelerates it forward, the block on top of it will do what? It has a tendency to accelerate backwards because of what? It's inertia. And if it is not, it means there is a force 
pulling it forward and that is what static friction it's static friction it's not F F is only interacting with the lower block not the upper block so in this case the static friction is acting forward it's similar but different from the case where we talked about a block sliding or a bike riding up a what an inclined plane at a constant speed um, so please for this block the free body diagram will look somewhat good morning faculty and student body at this time please read the daily announcements teachers please check dress code thank you good we have this is mg fs n21 we are we are drawing the free body diagram for these guys um for the lower block we will have f i'm going to put here this is the friction force on two by one this is the friction force on one by two forces always occur in pairs this is 2mg this is n on one by the earth now look up everybody is there a force missing in this diagram is there a force missing in that diagram is there a force missing here yes can you say that again please mm -hmm. This is the force, the normal force on block one by the earth. Remember? Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So this is N12. Alright, please, please, Andrew, thank you. Now observe here. Um, most students will always forget this little force right here. Most students will always forget this force right here. So I'm saying that pay attention to this force. By Newton's third law, forces always occur in pairs. Keep that in mind. Forces always occur in pairs. So if we use this diagram, you can see that Fs will be equal to what? Ma. And Fs is mu s n21 which is gonna be equal to mu s mg so if you simplify you will realize that this m cancels out with that m and a will be equal to mu s g this is for the first case now let's calculate the acceleration for the second case now here um, the force is acting on the upper block so we have F the force of friction will be backwards we'll have here this is N12 and this is MG for the lower block we will have here this is FS21 this is 2MG this is going to be N on one by the earth and better still there is going to be n one two so if we use newton's second law the system is moving to the right you will have f of s two one will be equal to two m a all of this is mu s n now the question is what n are we going to use here what n are we going to use here it's going to be n12 so this is going to be mu s what is this equal to mg so you have the masses will cancel and the acceleration will be half mu s of g so which is going to be half a1 so you recognize that the acceleration of the system B is less than the acceleration of what system A which is totally different from this scenario in which the acceleration was the same 
So it's critical that you always draw your free body diagram 